All right, John, it's been an adventurous couple of days aboard two adventure bikes. We got the KTM 1190 Adventure and the BMW R1200 GS Adventure. Uh, which one is more adventuresome? Depends on the kind of adventure you want to do, I think, is what it's going to come down to, huh? If you want to get really adventurous and go flying off-road like a, like a madman, jumping through the air and stuff, which we didn't do. I didn't do that. <laughs> but um, you probably want the KTM because it's like 80 pounds less, right? right? Yeah. It's more powerful, made like 126 horsepower to 108 for the BMW. So if you're going to be a real aggressive guy and you want to go fast, you, you want the KTM, I think. Well, you definitely want to put some different tires on it. Well, if you're, if you're going off in the dirt, you do. Yeah, huh? yeah. yeah. But for, for, for the pavement, these are great. We're flying up and down uh, Montezuma grade on both of them. And uh, the KTM feels like kind of a higher off the ground Ducati almost, really. You know, I can't picture anything that's going to go much faster up and down that road, except maybe the Super Duke R. All right. You know, the Super Duke. And the, the BMW, even though it's heavier and not as powerful, it has its own little way of going up and down the road, doesn't it? it it's, not, it's not far off the back of the KTM at all. It goes surprisingly quick for being heavier and bigger. It, it hangs its with the way. KTM. Uh, it doesn't have that punch out of the corners that the KTM does. No. I mean, no matter what, you know, it can... Yeah. It can hang, but every time out of the corner of the KTM, that engine, it just pulls. I mean, it, it feels like it has a lot more than just 16 or so horsepower it more. It's, it's the weight and the horsepower combined. Huh? Yeah. The KTM's a lot quicker. The, the Beamer's got cruise control, comes with heated grips, I think. Which we could use because we've tested these in extreme conditions, haven't we? It's down to like 60 degrees now here in California. Well, the, the reason that we took these two together is, you know, this is kind of BMW's, you know, top of the line off-road adventure tour, but we had the street tires put on, especially because it has the same wheel sizes as the KTM, and they both have the electronic suspension. And the, the fact that they both have traction control is pretty sweet, too, because we didn't really do any extreme off-roading, but we did do a little bit, a little bit of dirt road stuff. And uh, I know from past misadventure that um, it's pretty easy to fall off of these things when the back tire gets spinning a little bit. But when you put the KTM on off-road setting and you put that one on enduro and the rear will spin a little bit, but then it will kind of catch itself and keep you from being an idiot, which is really, which is really good if you're an idiot like me when it comes to going off-road. It's a whole, a whole added measure of safety that they both incorporate. Of course, they both got ABS brakes too. So for being as big as they are, you feel pretty safe. Like they'll do anything a road bike will do with the added bonus of being able to go off road. Yeah, the KTM is definitely a more visceral motorcycle. More uh, visceral. You feel some more That's vibes from word. the engine. You're exposed to the elements a little bit more. And the combination, yeah, it just makes you either street or dirt. Yeah. It kind of just wants you, you know, to go yeah. faster, to go faster. Yeah. It's Where the BMW, yeah, is a little happier if you just want to kind of putz around. Yeah. It's happy to do that. It can it can go fast, but it's it's happy to go slow. And when when, when you're in the off in the off road situations and you gas it a little bit, it it, it kind of warns you because the engine kind of says whoa when you open the <laughs> throttle, like whoa. Are you sure sure you want to do that? You know, but. And uh, the other thing, a BMW, the seat on that thing, yeah. I don't know what the foam is made of, but it's like some kind of real NASA super space age nice technology. space age butt padding or something, but it's just super comfortable. The luggage on the BMW is superb also, huh? Real yeah, it's easy definitely, to operate. It's, it's just got the, you know, pop-off removable tops where the KTM kind of has the fold down from the yeah. side. Yeah. Um, the mounting structure on the BMW is far superior to the KTM. I think in case of, a, of, a, of, a, of an a accidental tip over or something, those bags are attached. They're solid. And the ones on the KTM kind of are like the Triumph ones when right. they first built them a few years ago. That a little accident on that and the bags fly off. Well, getting back to, we we're talking about you know the uh, protection stuff with the KTM, the BMW. Now they both have adjustable windscreens, you know, right. manually adjustable. You know, the BMW just has a little bit larger windscreen, so it provides more wind protection. Um, you know, the width of the bike, I mean, you're actually, your lower half is protected really well on this motorcycle as well, more so than the KTM. 
-hmm. Now, now the weird thing is trying to mentally wrap your mind around how big that motorcycle is. I mean, sitting down, standing up, either way, you know, if you kind of glance down, you're like, my God, this is a bohemian. Uh, Where the KTM, you know, if you're doing your stand up kind of dirt road stuff, yeah. it feels more dirt bikeish. Yeah, it does. And and the suspension, though, like we we're saying, they're both electronic suspension, but. I really like the tail lever on the BMW because it maintains a more neutral stance, whether in the dirt or on the street. Mm -hmm. You jump off of this and you get on the KTM, and yeah, you can you know easily adjust it to be more stiff. Mm -hmm. And you get you know you push it hard on the street, and it's going to start flexing a little. The BMW seats is a little bit taller, and both of these are just about the height. Where I, if they were any taller, I wouldn't be able to ride them. Yeah. So I'm five eight, and I'm on my tiptoes on both of them. But uh, the BMW kind of, because of the boxer configuration, it feels like it carries its weight low, so it feels really balanced to me. The KTM feels kind of heavier, just because more stuff is up high on it. And uh, the BMW is cool too. What's the gas tank on there? We say seven gallons. No, it's eight gallons on the GSA. So you can, you can go a long way on that thing. Without right. So up. six gallons on the KTM, and this is two more than your standard GS as well. So That's you right. factor in the weight of gas. The BMW is still about 60 pounds heavier if you don't include the two extra gallons yeah, yeah, of fuel. Yeah. So it is, I mean, any way you cut it, it's a heavier motorcycle. Yeah. The other thing that makes these kind of uh, worthy of going off-road without without fear is that they both they both got spoke spoked wheels, which are stronger if you're hitting rocks and stuff like that. We try to avoid the rocks ourselves, but people will hit them. And um, so they're strong spoked wheels, but they're, they're also tubeless tires. Yeah. So we're carrying our tube patch kit. If it comes down to it, we're not going to have to do that trail side deal where the tire irons and the tire patch will just stick a plug in there and keep on going, right? Yeah. What could possibly go wrong? you got to take into consideration the price. I mean, as outfitted, we're looking at about 23000 on the BMW and a tick under eighteen with the KTM. Yeah. The bags are about uh, $600 a piece. And the bike comes with the mounting hardware which is nice if you take the bags off the KTM it looks good without the bags and that's a thumbs up there because you take the bags off the uh, BMW and although it does have a better mounting system it is kind of this you know erector set looking thing on there when the bags are off. I think the BMW is a really pretty bike too I don't know what that paint is called but it's some kind of like frosted blue or something and it goes with it. It's really pretty attractive looking bike to me. Now, the BMW's got the look. We were saying yeah. yesterday, it's, it looks like if it can't go around or over it, it'll just plow right through it. I yeah. mean, it's, it's an impressive looking motorcycle. Yeah, it gives you that, the, the whole long way around. And the KTM's a nice, you know, German built motorcycle too. Austrian, I'm sorry, same thing to me really. But um, the BMW, they just have like the fit and finish and everything, the little windshield adjuster to make the windshield go up and down, that little twisted yeah. thing. And I mean, it's a, just a, a, a really pretty little mechanism that they built to achieve that. And you can do it while you're riding down the road. And Where you can't you on the KTM, it takes a kind of two-handed Yeah, yeah, but you, 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 you have to stop to adjust the yeah. KTM one. Yeah, the, the liquid cool boxer is a big improvement over the old one. You know, it's not compared to the KTM. The KTM still has this, you know, fantastic, powerful engine. Yeah. It's the sport bike of the two, yeah. whether on the street or off this off road. Yeah. You know, if you're looking to have a good time, the KTM is it. If you want something that is kind of the world traveler and you're going to use cruise control and you're going to have a lot of highway miles on there, almost kind of like a touring bike. I mean, and then you see a dirt road and you just want to go down it. You're gonna you know, do it. Yeah, the GS handles it. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, I, I was kind of kind of a late believer in electronic suspension. Like, you don't need that. It's just a bunch of added complexity. But it's really nice to be able because we, when we started out a couple days ago, I had the thing on soft, and we went through a couple of curvy sections. I was like, this thing is kind of wallowing and gumby like. And then we stop, and I oh, I'll put it on hard for a while, and it just transforms it instantly, like at both ends, into like a, a sport bike that'll hang, hang on the tail of a KTM, which is. A pretty sporty sporty bike yeah and the ktm does the range of adjustment isn't quite as even when you put that one on soft or whatever it is on comfort it's never as cushy as the bmw is it's still kind of you can feel every bump at the end of the day it's really pretty easy if you want sporty and you're you know mr testosterone and you want to go flying off road sideways and fly up and down canyons the ktm's the sportier one but if you're more Mature like we are, 
Okay, I speak speak for myself anyway. I, I have to go go with the BMW for like a, a wider range of uses. If you want to afford it. If you can afford it. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a pricey motorcycle. Mm -hmm. You know, you could do the same thing on the KTM, uh, you know, save a few thousand dollars, no problem. But yeah, if it came down to uh, having the money and wanting to pick one to do the big world tour, just the, the variety of everything, I think I'd have to go with the BMW. For more details on these two bikes, go to Motorcycle.com, read the story. We'll have a lot more info. We'll see you there.